This video is brought to you by 3, bringing you 4G at no extra cost. Hey guys, welcome to BTEC. Basil here with the Sony Xperia Z3. The Xperia Z3 is Sony's best flagship to date. Unsurprisingly, given the fact it's their latest, it's good, it's very good. And this is our full review, so we're gonna tell you why we came to that conclusion. We're gonna start off by talking about the design, and Sony's improved this in a number of ways. For starters, as you can see, it's a slimmer phone. All in all, it feels much, much better in the hand. The metal to glass just feels more seamless, and you've got these new improved corners. Now it might sound counterintuitive upping the quality by adding plastic corners to your phone, but because phones tend to fall flat like so, these plastic corners will get significantly less scuffed than were they metal, although this does have a metal frame. Talking you around the actual device, you've got that 5.2 inch full HD display on here. It's got a gorgeous, gorgeous display, which we will talk about later, much, much better than the Z2. On the right hand side, you've got a micro SD and a nano SIM card slot. The first Sony phone, well the Z3 series, first phones to use nano SIMs. You've also got a power button and a volume rocker camera button which is very nice and easy to press. No buttons at all at the base of the device. Left hand side magnetic dock connector and underneath a flap is a micro USB connector. And all of these flaps by the way, way way easier to open and close than on the Z2 and other phones before it. The flaps are there because obviously this phone is waterproof completely so that you'll be able to use this in more adventurous circumstances. You've got a 3.5mm headphone jack there, you see a dot up there and there will be a dot down under here under the speaker and that's because this thing has dual microphones for stereo sound recording and you can see our video comparison with the iPhone 6. It really does produce very very loud stereo audio. There's a lot of noise cancellation in there and that won't be to everyone's taste but much much more audible stereo audio than that of the iPhone 6. Flipping it round you've got NFC contact points so that's for contactless payments etc and you've also got that 20.7 megapixel rear facing camera. That camera has an f2 lens as well as a flash. Sony insignia and scratch resistant tempered glass front and back. On the front of the phone we didn't mention those stereo speakers and front facing cameras. So design wise very very good. It feels slim, feels comfortable in the hand bringing the predecessor the Xperia Z2 into frame. One of the things that we always noted with this phone was that the glass seemed to be a little bit recessed, so edge to edge swipes just weren't super comfortable. It's all really, really been refined on the Z3. You can also see it's got slightly smaller bezels, especially at the side, bringing that head on. And it's also a slimmer, more classically styled device, kind of like a bullet from the side really super super smart. Moving that out of the way and we're going to bring another couple of handsets into frame just so you can get a real size comparison. This is the Xperia Z3 Compact. Putting them side by side you can see the Z3 is significantly taller but the Z3 is also a fair bit slimmer. Spec very very similarly the Compact will be anyone for anyone who wants a smaller display 4.6 inches by contrast to the 5.2 inch display on the Z3. Three. Also have a Samsung Galaxy Alpha. Again, we'll do a height test, bringing it into frame. And moving that out of the way. Finally, we'll do an iPhone 6 test, just so you can gauge whether or not the iPhone 6 or the Sony Xperia Z3 would be better served for you size-wise. You can see the Sony phone looks very, very classical. It's also available in a range of colors. You've got a bronze and a green version as well as a white one too. We've got the black one. The black one probably attracts fingerprints the most out of all of them. The white one naturally the least being white. Design highlights, just the in-hand sensation really and the fact Sony's refined it. It's a refinement, not a whole new design. We're not really too upset about that since we thought Sony was onto a pretty winning formula with its OmniBalance design anyway. As for the screen, that's another area Sony wins. First of all, Sony opted not to go Quad HD. Instead, you've got this full HD panel. So it's got the same pixel density as its predecessor. Anyone who watched our video yesterday will have seen that we have done a comparison between the Sony Xperia Z2 and Z3 display. If we whack it up to full brightness on the Z3, you can see the Z3 screen is significantly brighter, has better white reproduction, and a better display in general. 
general, so Sony's clearly improved things in that respect as well. All in all, the screen really does match the best out there, taking on things like the iPhone head on. The iPhone's better in some respects like outdoor viewability. This is still a very reflective panel as you'll be able to gauge from this review. It's worth mentioning the kind of controls Sony gives you over your user experience out of the box. Taking a look at the actual settings, they're more comprehensive than we've seen in the past. Tap to pay hasn't really been explored, apps are stuff we've seen, power management obviously lets you go in stuff like battery stamina mode for example, and control which applications have access to data etc. Jumping into display though, we're going to bypass storage, and you've got image enhancement, X reality for mobile, on or off, you can make everything look super vivid. You can all also um, control things like your white balance. So if we jump into that, you can change it so that it perfectly matches how your eyes see things. Glove mode enhances your touch sensitivity of the screen. On top of that, screen rotation, sleep, smart backlight control, which is basically an eye tracking system as we've seen on Samsung devices historically. And you've also got tap to wake, and this is one of our favorite things of all time, double tap the screen and it wakes. Perfect for a device that's really nice, flat, just just like this, looks perfectly seamless, mounted on a table, and you can just double tap it and see what's going on. There's another enhancement where you can pull down your notifications tray and swipe it up, and every time you pull down, it will automatically clear your notifications. So Sony's done some really nice stuff to the UI on top of the actual core UI. Moving inside that screen, and it is Android, Android 4.4.2. Sony's take on Android has been the same for a very long time. There are a few tweaks in this version, but they are literally just tweaks. So for example, if you wanted to edit your quick toggles, now you have this bar at the bottom that you can select your quick toggles from. You can see what a minor change that is. If we were to pull in our Xperia Z2, that's instead of this menu right here. So it really is just tiny, tiny things dotted throughout the UI. This is good in a way because Sony's UI allows for very quick customization of your smartphone. We have the tri-flat theme installed, we can swap out our theme very, very quickly. So if we apply the Xperia theme, you can see instantly we get a whole new, well, relatively instantly, a whole new look and feel, and it feels a lot more playstation a lot more classical Sony. The applications tray can be organized into folders, which we really like. That would have been one thing we would have really liked to have seen that's making its way into a lot more user interfaces. If you want to add things into the folders, you have to do it one by one. We would have loved a little plus here, for example, and then you could have just dotted the icons that you wanted, selected them, and they would have been installed um, into that folder. But you can see on the left-hand side, you do have other ways of organizing your applications that other interfaces don't have. Own order, alphabetical, most used, installed, and also it gives you a couple of options to get applications, the Google Play Store or Sony Select Store. Everyone knows a Google Play Store, Sony Select just has a few more applications that Sony actually curates for you. So pull down from the top, you've got notifications and you've got quick settings. This notification shows you LifeLog, which is actually one of Sony's applications, and it leads us on to some of the things you're going to get pre-installed on this phone. And there are quite a few things you will have pre-installed, which include obviously the proprietary apps like Album, Walkman as a mu music player, movies, and the exciting PlayStation Remote Play, which unfortunately we haven't been able to review because it isn't out yet. We'll come on to that later when we talk about multimedia. You also have what What's new? What's new is just going to fire some applications and content your way, and that's also selectable by pulling up from the bottom. We actually don't like being able to pull up from the bottom, we much prefer just having a raw Android experience so you can swipe up for Google now. There's also Sony Select, which we mentioned, and LifeLog. LifeLog is probably one of our favorite things of all time, and one of the scariest as well. You can see it literally tracks everything that you're doing at any given time. Really, really exciting but really, really creepy. It even tells you when it thinks you've traveled from point A to B, what application you were using, etc. how long you spent in whatever browser. This really does suggest that Sony knows a shed load about me after only having reviewed this for a couple of weeks. But it's a beautiful application and it syncs with Sony's smartware devices as well. So if you want a complete fitness tracking solution that's also gonna tap into your entire lifestyle, this could well be it. Anyone who saw our Sony folder may well be thinking though, bloatware, and that wouldn't necessarily be a wrong assumption. There is a lot of stuff pre-installed on here, and the 16 gig of memory on this phone is expandable, but it still gets to, tends to get filled up quite quickly. 
If we take a look at some of the other folders though, these are all ones that we've made. We've absolutely rammed it full of our applications and indeed we're getting near way there to filling up our 16 gigabytes. As far as the home screens go, we've got ours empty, but naturally you can populate yours with widgets, shortcuts to applications, and you can also swap out your wallpaper. We like Sony's UI, we just wish it was a little bit more refreshed, a little bit more updated. The look and feel of it, for example, looks like an Xperia Arcs UI that's been reinvented. Doesn't necessarily look like it complements this new OmniBalance design quite as much as, for example, HTC Sensors UI complements the M8, for example. As far as the multimedia highlights go, it's all about that screen and those speakers. We've done comparisons with the speakers and it matched the M8 speaker in a lot of ways. You can check out that video. Also, like we said, that screen rivaled the best out there, the iPhone 6 head-on. So between that and those brilliant stereo speakers, you don't even need to plug in your cans to enjoy content on this. If you did plug in headphones, in many regions, the Sony Xperia Z3 is gonna ship with active noise canceling headphones. So really, really nice stuff you're getting out of the box so you can enjoy your content, whether you're on a plane or a train, without being disturbed. If you take a look around the device, you can also see that micro SD expandability to the left hand side. But one thing that is happening quicker than ever before is we're filling up the 16 gig of memory on here. Were this available with 32 gig on it, we would jump at the chance. That's largely based on the fact apps are just getting bigger and that's a reality. You have to install a lot of applications onto your actual smartphone itself. So if we were to take a look at our apps, we can see We've already got ours chocker full. There's about 11 odd gigabytes available, maybe 12 um, coming up on 12. And we haven't got a crazy number of apps on here. We haven't got like crazy number of games. We've obviously done it a little bit faster because we've only had a short time with the phone to review it. But you guys will probably have two years with this phone. And we doubt you're gonna install any less apps than we've got right now. So naturally invest in a micro SD card. Any app that can be installed into a micro SD card, definitely you'll wanna do that. But you're also really want to bear in mind, is 16 gig going to be enough and Sony listen to us? Make a 32 gig variant next time. That would make this phone a lot more easy to recommend to multimedia addicts out there. As far as what that multimedia goes, we've already said get, movies look brilliant, but games, games look awesome. Music sounds great. Everything on here really, really is brilliant to enjoy. So we just wish there was that extra space with which to enjoy it on. Now moving on to that camera, 20.7 megapixels is a big number, but you usually take eight megapixel images. That's because you're gonna shoot your photos in superior auto mode. Superior auto mode's cool if you just wanna point and click, but it has a really bad habit of overexposing your pictures, in which case you wanna flip on manual, and here is where you can actually dictate your resolution, going all the way up to 20.7 megapixels. If we stay in eight megapixels though, we can activate things like HD manually and do what we really want to do and that's things like drop exposure a little bit and control our white balance. There are also a few other manual things that you can tweak such as focus mode etc but the manual controls aren't really all that manual by comparison to Lumia devices. It isn't the manual functionality that sets this apart though it's everything else you can do on it. You've got AR fun which means you can have virtual reality objects floating around. You've got multi-camera so that you can have multi multiple angles of the same scenario. Face in, which is picture in picture. You've also got 4K video naturally. Time shift video, which we posted a video of, and that's really, really awesome. Shame about the digital zoom on all the video though, and the touch to focus. We would have loved to see touch to focus make an appearance in video. As for the other applications, these are all things that we've seen before in um, the Sony Xperia Z2. Background defocus, AR effects, time shift burst photo, and they all perform well. Um, Social Live as well has been um, supplemented with live on YouTube, so you can even broadcast from your Sony Xperia Z3 directly to YouTube, which is super, super smart. We're gonna jump into manual mode though, take a really quick picture just to illustrate. Despite the eight megapixel default setting, you're gonna get stupendous amounts of detail in here if the lighting is good, as you can see. 
and you shouldn't really have any cause for complaint. Definitely, if you get the Xperia Z3, you'll have one of the best camera phones on the market today, and one of the only ones that can record 4K video, and the only one which has active image stabilization, um, digital image stabilization, steady shot in that 4K video, and it works incredibly well. If you check out our other videos, you'll see some of the bits we're walking, it actually kind of looks like we're floating on air, something we assure you we cannot do. So moving away from multimedia, and you should be able to get that this gets a resounding thumbs up in that respect and we can move on to performance and performance again that Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 2.5 gig 3 gig of RAM no issues whatsoever we just really wish there was that extra memory on board out of the box without us having to supplement it with a micro SD card and of course even when you do, a lot of apps have to be installed onto here. As far as connections go, this has Cat4 LTE, NFC, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, everything you're really going to want. We wouldn't have minded Cat6 LTE, so it could have competed directly with the likes of the Samsung Galaxy Alpha, for example, and the upcoming Samsung Galaxy Note 4, as well as the Huawei Ascend Mate 7. But Cat6 LTE will really only be available to the minority of people who live in London and are on EE, for example. So for the majority of people out there, it really is nothing but a spec. Moving on to battery life and Sony's managed to improve it over its predecessor despite slashing the number of milliamps in here. You can see we've flicked on adaptive display while talking to it and by adaptive we mean auto brightness and that's because you need to do that if you want to get two days battery life out of this. The screen brightness really is a massive massive factor but once you do you won't even need to look at battery stamina mode for example. It'll actually last around a day a day and a half easily for power users and if you're not a power user up to two days. So with that super impressive battery life feat under its belt, thanks to Sony says that display sporting a new kind of technology, we have to commend the Sony Xperia Z3. Sure this is a very incremental upgrade but it's better in all the departments it needed to be better. We would have loved to see more memory on here and more internal memory, largely because apps are getting bigger and that's the reality of it. But that's one of the minor quibbles that we've got with this very, very good handset. Hopefully you've enjoyed our review. If you have, click that like button. If you want more information about the Sony Xperia Z3, fire us a comment in the comments section below. And if you like B-Tech in general, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.